emerge from the abyss. Blah. All right, there we go. Weekly buy tiers. I have a terrible intro as usual. So here we go. Once again, we're back to walk you through our favorite players to invest in and hopefully utilize in your spark contests. I like to think this adds value, and if not, you can always fade if you deem that is necessary. Now, looking at the smash plays to get us started here, the running backs. Achan, the new age McCaffrey is how I'm looking at him. Just love the usage. Hopping on the trend there. Why do should we like Christian McCaffrey and Kareem Hunt this week? McCaffrey just feels like he's due. Like, I mean, he went one or two games all of last season without scoring a touchdown, and so far he's over two. So feels like a spot against the Packers, whose defense hasn't been amazing. Um, and you have a guy that can kind of do it all. So whether the game script is passing or the game script is running, he's going to be the primary focus in both of those facets and should have a big game in a, a huge game for the Niners. This is a pretty must win or the season's over. So you got to win this one, especially because of tiebreakers in the wild card and all of that. So feels like he'll be a, a focal point. I like that. Um, yeah, Hunt is kind of a weird one to have up here in Elite, but I just felt like I needed to shout him out because he has an 8.95 projection right now, which I think is way too low here. Um, Pacheco is expected to return. Uh, he is classified as day-to-day, -day, though. I imagine they're going to see split usage. Uh, definitely heavily leaning towards Kareem Hunt, at least for the first game or so. Um, I think he'll get more than half of the backfield touches. They're going up against the Panthers, who have allowed – uh, the second most rushing yards and most rushing touchdowns to RBs. Um, and I think the Chiefs are going to be up all game. It's going to be a run-heavy game script. Hunt has averaged 16 fantasy points, which is seven more than what he's projected through his last um, six games. So smash spot for sure. I like it. And then for the note for the McCaffrey thing, Kittle's back too, which will help the run game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. On to this, I decided to go with Debo. Um just because I feel like everybody's now believing that Juwan Jennings is the next coming of whatever it may be. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take a chance on Depot. Typically, as well against zone. So, buy the dip here. But why should we like A.J. Brown and Joshua Downs? Yeah, it just feels like a spot where A.J. wasn't super involved in the offense last week. Um, it felt like a huge smash bot. And just the, the run game was kind of how they got through. And there were some weird plays with short fields and stuff where – um, the pass game wasn't able to really develop. And this feels like a spot on Sunday night football against the Rams. The Rams run D has been pretty good. Um, their corners have, have struggled for most of the season. So this feels like kind of a spot to get them the ball early and often and, and start that, uh, that kind of connection up again. For sure. Um, yeah. And I'm riding the hot hand here with Josh Downs against the Lions who allow the second most yards to receivers per game. Richardson is back starting for the Colts um, in his return. Downs had five catches for 84 yards and a touchdown. He's going to be starting again against the Lions. So Downs, we can expect to be the, the clear wide receiver one there. Um, he already brings in 22.2% of the target, so I love this matchup for him. I think we're going to see a, a, another big game. I like it. I like it. All right. So the tight ends, um, Trey McBride, I think he's due. I don't really have any other good reasoning outside of that. <laughs> the safety kid is due at this point. Uh, Brock Bowers, the Goddard, why should we like these two? Outside of Grant being like, well, he's part of my favorite team. <laughs> I mean, he's been a target freak <laughs> recently. Um, he will lead tight ends in receiving yards this season. Um, he's even, I think he might be leading all rookies in receiving I yards. I think he might be like the all tight positions. end one. Yeah, he is a tight end one for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in PPR formats, this feels like a spot where, um, he's just going to get fed targets. The Broncos linebacker core is nothing to be super afraid of. And he's kind of been the only target. It feels like the Raiders sole goal this season at this point is just to, see how many yards and catches they can get Brock Bauer. So, I mean, if you already have him on your lineup, you're obviously in a great spot, but yeah, great player. Yeah. Goddard, I think is a pretty fun play this week. Um, I almost week in week out target this Rams defense with one of my tight end picks because they just get absolutely cooked there. Um, so yeah, this is just the right matchup. Um, I think, no real reason besides that. I think just a guy you need to keep up 
keep on your radar this week just because of the game script. I like it. All right. On to the next section here, we have the running backs. Um, mine's just based on the coach quote, bad weather in theory should bode well for Najee Harris. Um, so we will see if he gets an uptick in workload tonight. Um, really low scoring game environment. So really not the best play in the world, but I like it. Why should we be interested in Brian Robinson Jr. and Javante Williams? Yeah, so the Cowboys' run defense has been dreadful all season. Um, we saw what happened last week against the Texans and Joe Mixon, and Brian Robinson feels like a pretty similar profile to Joe Mixon, guy that's going to do a lot of his work between the tackles, can get goal line work and, and all the above. So we obviously saw Eckler have some success last week against the Eagles in what was kind of a weird game script. Um, this feels like this should be Brian Robinson's return to early down carries and all the goal line work and things like that. This should be a big weekend for him. I like it. Yeah, this is a, a matchup deal for me. Like Javante, he is a little bit frustrating. You know, some games he'll pop off, or more often than not, he doesn't pop off. But he still sees a pretty solid amount of attempts. They're going up against a Raiders defense. Um, that has been rough against the run all season. They look a little bit better after their bye, but they still gave up a touchdown and 109 yards to the Dolphins back. So I think it's a little good bounce back spot for Javante. I can see him getting into the end zone here for sure. I like it. Big fan of both these plays here. All right. And the receivers. So if, and for some reason, it is not Kareem Hunt, I'm in agreement, it should be a big Kareem Hunt day, then perhaps maybe this will be a better spot with D-Hop. Um, apparently, like, the left tackle or something has just been terrible for the Chiefs, and that's why they've been running a lot more 12 personnel, and that's why you saw Noah Gray be out there so much more. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that could factor into it here where they're going against the weaker matchup, so perhaps he gets more involved in the game plan. Uh, JSN and Odunze, what should we be expecting out of these two just ridiculous prospects? Yeah, I'm just super high on JSN in general. The kind of second half breakout kind of situation is well and truly alive after last week when I believe he caught 11 passes for some like a hundred yards. Um, a lot of it did come kind of towards the end when they were trailing, but this is kind of the reality with the Seahawks offense where they put themselves in situations where they're down in games and they're throwing a lot. Um, their main goal, even kind of in close games is to throw the ball a good amount. And it feels like JSN is kind of taking over the mantle of the, uh, intermediate routes and all that kind of situation. You obviously still have DK, the deep ball threat and jump balls and, and that kind of thing. But JSN feels like the guy that's going to take the, the brunt of most everything else. So I'm super high on him the rest of the season and in particular this weekend. Yeah, I like this spot for Romo Dunze. We've seen it just as a general trend that rookies tend to get more usage later into seasons. Uh, and luckily for Odunze, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen have been super underwhelming. Odunze, though, seems to be creeping up on their target share. He hasn't gone under six target, or he's gone under six targets once in his last six games, um, which is a pretty stark difference from the first half of the season. Seems like he's building up his connection with Caleb Williams. They're going up against the Vikings defense this week, who's one of the worst in the league in terms of fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So I like the spot for Rome. I like it. All righty, on to the next one. Tucker Craft, for me here, um, he was still out there for over 90% of the snaps. He just didn't command any volume. So I'm willing to take a chance in a super competitive matchup that perhaps he just gets involved. Will Disley and Theo Johnson, walk me through why I should be interested. I am still on the Herbert MVP train, so I'm going to just be excited about whatever Grant has to say here. <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um, we saw Disley score last week connection kind of continued to build after the week before when he dropped a long touchdown, but was still kind of a decent part of the offense. And the Ravens pass defense in general has been great. They really pride themselves on being able to stop the run and this Chargers offense um, day by day is kind of getting closer to pass heavy. Um, we saw kind of towards the end of that last game on Sunday night football, there was a lot of run, but that's kind of what you have to do when you have a lead the first half is kind of more what I'm basing my assumption on, and, and that was a ton of throwing the ball. The offense looks super fluid, and Will Disley was definitely a part of it, and his projection is pretty low. So it feels like a good spot to continue building there. Maybe it's, uh, um, Theo Johnson. We've got Tommy DeVito in New York, meaning a switch 
in the offensive scheme. At least Tommy uh, tends to do more damage in the intermediate and inside routes. So that should, in theory, involve more Theo Johnson, should involve more Wandale Robinson. And they're also going up against a Buccaneers defense that is relatively poor against the tight end position. I think this could be a fun spot for Theo. I like it. I like it. All right. And on to the more contrarian options. Uh, so my theory with the Broncos is it's hot hand approach. So last week was Javante. Maybe it'll go back to SMA this week. We will see. John Payton loves to keep us guessing constantly. So we will see. All right. Roshan Johnson, Amir Abdullah, walk us through why we should be interested in these guys. We're taking. Yeah, Roshan had 11 carries in that Packers game this weekend. <laughs> He gets a ton of work around the goal line, obviously. He scored a touchdown. I think he only finished with like 30-ish yards. But, yeah, he was hovering around that 10-point mark, which is well over his projection this week. And you can definitely count on him getting the ball inside the five almost without fail. So that's a kind of good backup plan where he should be able to score a touchdown. And the volume was up from the last few weeks, even when he was only a, a touchdown vulture. So you kind of have two ways you can get to that projection now. I like it. Yeah, if you if you were watching last week, you'll remember that Grant and I did Zamir and Madison, um, respectively. They both got hurt last week. Um, we both liked that play because we saw the new offensive coordinator coming in. Um, and I think this is a fun week to once again target another Raiders running back because we're seeing those injuries in Zamir and Madison. So Amir Abdullah is probably going to be sharing part of the work with Dylan Lobb, their new running back. But I kind of presume Amir is going to get most of the work. Um, I, I just think it's a fun shout, that super deep shout. I like it. I like both the options. More life than mine. All right. Wide receivers, Alec Pierce. I like Jackson Shout going for the pass funnel here. I'm just taking the chance of the guy who had 80% of snaps. Just had these kind of pop games out of nowhere. So he's either going to boom or he's going to get you a doom. Uh, Jalen McMillian, Demario Douglas, what should be interested in these guys? Yeah, this is kind of just taking a shot. I, I feel like Mike Evans coming back is really going to open things up for Jalen McMillan more so than it's going to hurt him. The other guys in this offense, like a Sterling Shepard or someone like that, is really going to be more affected by Mike Evans coming back, the outside receivers. But you see Jalen McMillan, who runs a ridiculous percentage of his routes from the slot, and having Mike Evans there over the top is kind of going to clear things up in the intermediate routes. We've seen uh, Kate Otten have a ton of success on those type of routes, and now you're going to have McMillan there running them with him. He was struggling with a bit of an injury the last couple of weeks, but it seems like he's full go. And, uh, yeah, should be able to provide a little bit of a Chris Godwin with Mike Evans kind of effect here. Yeah, I like Demario Douglas this week. Obviously, we're getting Drake May under center. Uh, last week was Brissett's final start. Douglas still saw six catches in that game. Um, the Dolphins have been pretty stout against receivers for the majority of the season. However, five receivers have scored 14 or more PPR points against them in the past four games. That's the main reason I like Douglas. I think he could see a lot of the target share against the Dolphins. He could see something like even close to like 10 targets, I think, with Drake May under center. Um, he has five games already this season with seven targets um, and scored at least 10, P I think at least 10 PPR in every single one of those. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a fun spot for Demario Douglas here. I like it. I like it. All right. So for the tight ends, I'm running it back with another terrible option here of the same thing. Shiggy. Let's get Chiggy with it. Um, yeah, this is going to be a terrible game, but you never know. Maybe Ridley gets locked up. Um, Singletary's been looking like an absolute monster out there. Tyler Boyd has just basically become non-existent. Um, maybe he does something. I like the Isaiah Likely play. AJ Barter, I know the name, but you need to explain to me the game once <laughs> we get there. Yeah. So Isaiah Likely and AJ Barner, walk me through them. Yeah, likely just saw a huge uptick. I believe he's the leading receiver for the Ravens this weekend against Pittsburgh, which could be for a variety of things. Uh, I mean, Pittsburgh's corners are pretty good, and their linebackers are more focused on rushing the passer, so you kind of get some open little areas for a guy like Isaiah Likely. Um, I, I don't think the Chargers defense is anything to be too scared of when it comes to the tight ends, 
And it, this feels like it could be kind of falling for a trap because the last time we saw Isaiah Likely have a productive game, he was just dead for the rest of the season. So um, kind of have to take this one with a grain of salt. And maybe you, if you're in a super deep league, you add him to your bench and kind of wait a week. But this feels like a spot where he could continue to build on that production that we saw if they found something that they like. I like that. Yeah, Barner, um, we know that Font is out with a groin injury. He has stepped up as the primary receiving tight end since then. He quietly has 11 targets through his last two games, which I think is more than he's had the entire season combined. Um, and he surprisingly ranks third among route participation. So they've been trying to get him involved. Seahawks are a super pass happy team in a high scoring game environment against the Cardinals. Um, Barner hasn't really made anything happen with those targets yet, but I feel like this is a fun spot to take a swing at him doing so for the first time. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think that's all we have for you in this video one. So invest accordingly, spark accordingly, and of course, subscribe accordingly. So until next time, talk to you all later. Peace, y'all. Peace.